So it seems like everybody has their favorite tool, or at least favorite types of tools that they like to use for things, even if maybe that's not the easiest tool to use for that thing. For instance, Arduino vs. Evil has his famous miner's wrenches, and I have these. I love these old wrenches. I would defend these to my dying breath. I love them that they don't have teeth on them, so they won't mar up whatever you're trying to, to mess with. Because they don't have teeth, they can act as a very nice clamp, almost like a C-clamp, and they're a nice hammer. But most of all, I just love the atmosphere of them. I love the wooden handle. I love the patina on them. I love the history behind them. I love how they're, well, they're super easy to get, but they're, each one's different. This is the first one I ever got. This was given to me by my great-grandfather when he passed away. It was in his box of junk that he let me have, and it's a little sentimental, but it's also just such a wonderful wrench. I love it. It's a perfect wrench. Well, then I found another wrench just like it at a flea market a little later on, a few years later. So then I could undo two things that needed nuts. Although this one looks to be a different, a little different. This one comes from the B&C Corporation. And this one, I think it's actually a Coe's wrench. I'm not really sure. It is so gunked up that I've never been able to read it. Well, if you guys have ever heard of a YouTuber by the name of the Post-Apocalyptic Inventor, then you'll probably have seen his videos, and they're pretty good. I was wanting to, to give him a, a gift of one of these wrenches. So, I went on eBay and I found a wrench. Well, then I was like, you know what? If I get this wrench, I'll probably fall in love with it. So I got two wrenches. This one was supposed to be it, it said it's a six inch wrench, so I thought it meant six inch opening. I was thinking it's going to be a huge wrench. It's a tiny wrench. Look at that. It's so tiny. It's wonderful condition. Well, I bought two, thinking that I'll fall in love with one and I'll send one to him after I restore it. I've ended up falling in love with both of them. So I've, I bought two wrenches, in, intending to give one away, and I've fallen in love with the biggest one and the smallest one. So, I think what I'll do is I'll just... I'll send him my copy of a wrench. The one that I have a duplicate of. Well, that being said, whenever you clean the rust off something, you have to make sure that you keep the rust off. You can't put motor oil on them, but motor oil can kind of make it kind of grimy. I think that's why this one's kind of grimy. The handle soaked up that or something like that. That being said, though, I don't know why this is not rusting. This one's just so beautiful. That does not need any cleaning at all. But I was thinking about experimenting with cleaning these off and using this clear gloss enamel that I have. I don't know. I mean, we should test it out. So, to test it out, I found this old vise in my father's shed. And I say, let's clean that up. And let's try some of that premium enamel gloss whatever paint stuff on that to see if it looks okay. And then if that works okay, we can clean up those wrenches and clean and, and spray it under there. Although this original one, I kinda wanna keep it rusty because it's this is it's a used rust. It's worn off the same amount that I've used it. But this one, that one's pretty chunky. I haven't used it in a while. So we should see about also if if the enamel works on this. To use it on this. Actually, you know what? It's about 37 degrees outside, and this thing says the lowest temperature is 50. And I've never really had too good of chances with painting things whenever it's almost freezing outside. So that might not be a good idea. So maybe we'll put the vise away for a different day, and we can make a video just about the vise. It is a Craftsman 5242. So that's kind of interesting. I don't know when that's from, but I'll look that up. And it occurred to me, oh wait, W40. W40 should work perfect for preserving the metal. I always forget about W40. It always smells so wonderful, too. This wrench is actually really nice. It doesn't need any cleaning, I don't think. It just looks so perfect. And it looks like really nice and black. Now it's aged nicely. So I'm not going to have to restore that one. And this one, well, you know what? Let's go ahead and do a little bit.
Well, I think if I just take a Kleenex and put that on there, and then just wipe it on there, that should get the dirt off and put the WD-40 on. So that's a pretty good deal going on there. Well, I say let's let that sit for a little bit and get on to the next one. This is the mystery one that I picked up a while back. And I cannot make out what it says, but I've never even cleaned it. Well, I guess we have to take off the, the price tag first. Actually, never mind. It's not too bad. Coe's Wrench Company, Worcester... Worcester? Whatever. Massachusetts, USA. So that's about right, because that's, that's what the other ones say. So that's nice. It actually is a Coe's Wrench. But on the other side, it's a little better. Manufactured under Elko's Patents Steel. That's pretty cool. It does not have a date code, though. You see, that's the reason I fell in, in love with this big one that I ordered, because it's the biggest one, and it has dates on it. Look at that. May 30th, or April 30th, 1895, and May 15th, 1900. I can't give that one up. Oh, it sure does open a lot easier now. This is all gunked up. Couldn't even get it to open up the first time without spraying WD-40 into it. That's a good amount of rust coming off. Because right now there's just a bunch of little tidbits of rust floating around on here. I mostly stayed clear of the area with the handle. I figure the post-apocalyptic inventor can, can, he can fix that if he wants. I just, I didn't want to hurt the wood anymore by the wire brush. So I kind of stopped right there and just went quickly over this to get most of the stuff off, but that's about it. It's kind of interesting. Somebody marked V-I-I-I, or 8, into the back of this. That's kind of cool. Going to the bigger one, the one that has the date codes. Let's clean that off real quick. Oh, much easier. It's amazing how a little bit of lubrication can go a long way. Well, I think that is about it for that wire wheel. My dad got this wire wheel when I was like 10, and this finally died. Wow. <laughs> it, all this, all the metal bits came off. Oh, well. I figure if, if it lasts 12 years, it's a pretty good deal. Because I think he paid like, what, 10 bucks for it? This is taking a little longer to dry than I expected, but it is now below freezing, so whatever. That seemed to help a little bit. Just seems less greasy now. Yeah. So here we have the Elko's patented April 30th, 1895, May 15th, 1900. To actually have a date on your tool is pretty awesome, I think. 
Coe's Wrench Co. Worcester, or Worcester. I would pronounce it Worcester, though. Massachusetts. It might be Worcester. That's interesting. That's interesting to see the word without the H in it. Do they all have that? Springfield, Massachusetts. Yeah, yeah, Worcester. Or Worcester. Worcester. I don't know. Well, that's pretty much it. I'm quite happy with how clean these are. I might put WD-40 in this one, too, but I don't know. I think they turned out nicely. And this one definitely looks a lot nicer than it did before. Well, maybe not definitely, but it kind of does, at least. But I'll go ahead and ship that one off to the Postal Apocalyptic Inventor. And you guys might want to go check out his channel. He has some pretty nice videos. And, to be honest, his videos are really well made. I really like them. Well... Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching. Maybe some other time we can do that vice. See ya!